going to be talking though about the, uh, I know what sounds, you know, the tax changes that come in that were announced in budget 2024. And you're probably thinking snooze fest. I absolutely don't want to listen to that. But the average worker, the average um, worker out there is actually going to benefit to the tune of about 800 quid or so the headlines tell us as of the uh, the changes that were announced are coming to, to effect from the 1st of January. So we're going to find out. We'll be talking to financial advisor Paul Merriman about that in a few moments' time. If you've any financial questions, though, for Paul as well, you can always send them in to us. The uh, WhatsApp number is 87 106. You can drop me a voice note on that either. And also, on a Tuesday afternoon, we are going to start talking about podcasts here on the show, 140 every Tuesday over the next couple of weeks. And we're doing it because podcasts are, there's just so many amazing podcasts out there. I know that I am definitely somebody who needs to broaden the scope of what they listen to because I just tune into the same genre all of the time. So Laura Mullet and Shelley Gray are going to be here with me at 1.40 today to tell me what I should be listening to. And we are also reviewing The Pact. So that is coming up in a few moments time. You can drop us an email either, lunchtimelive at newstalk.com. One thing though that everybody is going to uh, feel well quite a lot of us are going to feel it and that is the new toll increases that have come into effect we're talking about the tolls on about 10 different routes across the country now some of the the journey increases it's about 20 cent on some trips but that does hike up to between 30 to 50 cent in others and even up to 2 euro in some cases as well. Take a listen to the Anthu leader Patter Tobin he was chatting on the Pat Kenny show with Ivan a little earlier. I just can't believe that the government are, you know, on one hand, giving tea and sympathy to people who are in a cost of living crisis. And on the other hand, they're actually jacking up the costs that people are dealing uh, with. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of people in the commuter belt who are in commuter hell on a daily basis, traveling two and three hours for round trips uh, to and fro to work. And for the pleasure of doing that, they're getting fleeced by the government in terms of tolls uh, on a daily basis. Uh, And the really frustrating element for for me is that the government have control over this cost of living issue. So the government, you know, for the last year have said, you know, cost of living crisis, they can't control inflation. These are international issues in the main that are pushing up this. Yet, if we actually look at the government's actions, they're now getting more in terms of VAT and excise and carbon tax from fuel uh, than they ever did before. And twice now in the last 12 months, they have put up the cost of tolls uh, in this country. Yeah, that's Patter to being here a little earlier. Um, Shane O'Donoghue is the editor with CompleteCar.ie. Shane, is Patter right? Like, are motorists being fleeced, as he describes it? It certainly feels that way. And this is just another blow to the pockets of Irish motorists when we really could do without it. And to me, to me, there's so much more to this. I mean, look, I guess one part of it is just to explain to listeners or though I guess listeners have heard this topic so many times they might already know that eight of the tolls are um, operated by PPPs, that's Public Private Partnership. And they would have been set up years ago um, in partnership with private enterprise and there would be agreements to allow them to increase tolls along with inflation. So that's one side of it, which is kind of difficult, difficult to get out of by the government, I think. The other side, however, there are two of them, um, the M50 toll and then the Port Tunnel in Dublin, that they are operated by Transport Infrastructure Ireland, TII. And that, that is effectively a government organisation and effectively that's in the control of the government. And I have a big issue with those going up. Um, you know, they don't have to go up. I mean, I know costs have to be covered somewhere, but the point is here that, again, like Patter just said, the cost the cost of living has just gone up so much and cost of driving has gone up so much. The and two that you're talking about, sorry, Shane, the two, the the the, um, the TII uh, toll increases, how much have they gone up by? Um, it depends on what the vehicle you're driving, of course, but the M50 um, has gone up 30 cent, I believe it is. Okay, and, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, per, per journey. And it depends if you have a tag or not as well. So it does vary a bit. Um, and of course, uh, you know, bigger trucks and stuff pay pay more. The toll for the Dublin Tunnel um, has increased at peak periods for cars from 10 euro to 12 euro, which is a significant increase. That is a jump, isn't it? It is. I mean, the it's labelled as demand management. Um, 
But I mean, I mean, it may well be. And you know, if you if you go to the TII website, it's almost the the wording of it is supposed to be factual, but it's almost apologetic, and it's trying to make excuses for it. And I just don't, I just don't buy it. I mean, it's trying to say that it's, it's the whole tunnel, the tunnel is designed to manage uh, HGV traffic to the port, which is fine, well and good. But I don't believe it's completely full. And what but is, is that, do, is, that doing, is that is that their point though that the, the reason the two euro increase uh, isn't it between t- ten o'clock and twelve or, or the um, the peak times the reason that's jumped up by two euro in the port tunnel is the suggestion that there is congestion there so it's to to deter people basically then it is to deter people but the the thing is the tunnel takes traffic away from you know the city or the city centre or other smaller roads so that traffic has to go somewhere. Um, and I'd argue that, uh, you know, the traffic using uh, an efficient motorway or part of a motorway, which the, the tunnel effectively is, is far superior than them having to drive through the city. Um, and, and that's the other, my other big problem with the M50, actually. There are people who are already avoiding it by going through the smaller areas, um, you know, the, the, going through small roads, mm-hmm. going through smaller communities, causing congestion there and causing pollution there. And, you know, any little increase, I, th- I feel that people are just going to avoid it even okay. more. And St- Stay with me, Shane, if you don't mind for a moment. I, I, w- I just want to chat to um, some motorists as well. I want to know how are people actually affected by the toll increases? Kieran is on the line. Kieran, what's your, your view on this? Like, how are you impacted? Uh, my, my view is I'm a HGV driver. A uh, small hauler there now, maybe eight to ten trucks, maybe twelve, will be paying around 30,000 a year on tolls. That's going to affect the cost of living. Everything in this country is delivered by road. Your food, your white goods, your furniture, everything. Now, smaller truckers might work to avoid it, but like it's adding to the cost of living um, for an Arctic at the minute. Now, I think it's 650 each way on the toll uh, here. So most trucks are going through those. They're in what? They're in every county. You, you're going to be going through. So, like, it, it's going to have a big em- impact on the cost of living. Everything, supermarkets, they'll have to cover their costs. The holidays, it's just going to impact everyone. Cars, I suppose, you're saying 20 cent, not a whole lot in the end of it. So the commercial side of it is going to is going to take the heat. And we're going to pay for that again at the end of the day. And then presumably then, of course, that's, that's naturally, it's passed back on, Kieran, to the, uh, to, to the consumers. It's back to the consumer. That's, 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 that's what's going to happen at the end of the day. Small, small fellas with two, one or two trucks might go wrong, but look, it's going to add a half an hour or an hour to thing, and you can't afford that if you're doing, doing it like, like it is. And, and that's just, just, just the way it is. I think, like the money they're making at the minute, it, I, I can't see how to justify it at all. What about you, Hugh? Like, what impact does the, does the, toll, you know, the toll hikes have on you? Yeah, um, we have a, an estate agency business, Hugh Morris Alliance Auctioneers in Dublin and Mead. So I would use the, the M3 motorway up to several times a day uh, and into the M50 uh, as well. So it, it does have an effect. It's an added cost. But I think what the government are really missing the picture is that why haven't they bought out these contracts at this point in time? Uh, the whole idea of this infrastructure was to get people off secondary road networks and onto this new infrastructure uh, and, and, and make it a safer environment for people to commute uh, uh, during the day. They've done that, they've delivered the roads, there's no doubt about there's a cost in doing that, but surely in a, in a modern grown uh, country with a larger population, the highest employment rates that we've ever seen, that a budget for infrastructure and building the likes of the Leinster Outer Orbital and further road projects throughout the country uh, should be done without tolls. And, and the big question is here, should we have tolls here on these roads? I don't think so. I think the government, it's about time that we bought these contracts out. Well, and I, I presume the TII, though, will say it's to do, though, Hugh, with um, the road maintenance, you know, development of the future networks. Like that. That's usually the argument, isn't it? I think the argument on that point was that we pay road tax on our vehicles, and the road tax at the end of the day was the maintenance. If you take people off secondary road networks that, uh, and put them into a motorway environment, it's cost beneficial, uh, even on the rate of accidents, the amount of accidents uh, compared to uh, motorways and secondary road networks. It is beneficial that we have good infrastructure, that we have motorways, mm. but that we encourage people to use them. And I think what we're really missing here is, even for the commuter, 
the commuter that's not getting uh, a write-off, uh, uh, being able to claim back the VAT or the expense of the toll, uh, that somehow we encourage those motorists to get back and use this infrastructure and continue to build this infrastructure. I believe there's a number of motorway uh, projects around the country being held up uh, because it's been policy at the moment on their environmental grounds not to move forward with them. We are a growing economy, and at the rate of the growth of the Irish economy, we need road infrastructure. Is it possible then, Shane, like, is that a fair point from you? Should we be just, you know, buying them out, basically? Oh, I think so. I think I think that would be the best thing we could possibly do. It feels like it feels like motorists are being held to ransom. Um, I mean, the um, the M6 toll, for instance, that, that's horrendously expensive in comparison to most in the country. Um, and it just goes up and up and up. And there's people, there are thousands of people going through that every single day commuting. And in fact, you know, we've spoken to people, um, to commuters, and there's lots of people avoiding it. <laughs> because it is so expensive. So it's completely... It's but completely sure, you know if anyone from, from you know, government is in the show, they, they'll tell us the whole idea, a big part of this certainly is to try and encourage people to leave the cars at home more frequently. Use the public network system. <laughs> Oh, I, I know that's and that that's that's the long term goal for sure. But the public transport, as we've already discussed many times here, is not fit for purpose. And people are driving because they have to, because it's it's cheaper, it's uh, reliable, it's available. You know, public transport does not cover um, a, a enough of the the road network does not cover enough of the population for people to use it in commuting. So people have to use their cars right now and therefore we shouldn't be making it too expensive. Yeah, for the other thing I think that really, really antagonises people is whatever about paying, you know, for, for your toll and a lot of people don't, you know, necessarily mind. You, you pay whatever the rate is or maybe the current rate, whatever about the hike. It's the fact that there's some roads for which, and new roads, there's no tolls. You know, it's nearly the, the equity of a chain and how it's yeah. dispersed, or the, the charges <laughs> are dispersed around the country. Like some routes can have two and three tolls. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I know that the government will point to the fact that the the, private, the PPP, the private public private partnerships, have brought in capital to develop these roads, and that the you know the private enterprise needs to be repaid for that, which is fine. But as Hugh pointed out, we are a growing economy, a strong economy. Mm-hmm. And now we have money to use on infrastructure and we should be using it for these purposes. We shouldn't be relying on private enterprise in that way. And, you know, we shouldn't be therefore hammering motorists who are already paying a lot. Yeah, some of the text on this. Let's not forget, Andrea, they've scrapped the free tolls for EVs. So even more money coming in from the start of the year without a rate increase. Another text are three tolls to get to the airport from the west of Ballinasloe. The west being screwed again, says this listener. Uh, it's an absolute joke the tolls have been increased again. You can travel from Dublin to Cork without coming across a toll, but travelling to Cavan, you have to pass three. How is that fair? What about you, James? How are you affected by the toll increases? Well, I think the whole point of it is it's to do with uh, the Minister for Transport and his promotion of his agenda. There's less roads now, actually, in the country. I know there's new roads built, but there's so much road being taken up now by cycle lanes and uh, walking lanes. We're losing road with more traffic coming on stream. And I think there's every disincentive not to use, every disincentive being created not to use your vehicle. Now, that's fine for cars. Mm. What about trucks? They have no choice. You know, buses have no choice. Private buses have no choice. So where are they going with this? Like, I mean, is, is that twenty-one percent increase in the last couple of years on tolls? Well, it's it's, it's, it's we already had a, a toll increase um, towards the middle of last year as well, didn't we? Two thousand and twenty-three. We two in the one year. I think there's been something like twenty-one in the last, or certainly more than that, since he came into power. And I think that's all been driven by that particular agenda. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I think it's been driven yeah. by that. Well, it's Again, a, it's just yeah, don't want green, green policy, yeah. out there. Can you rely on public transport? Could you rely on it, James? Where I live. Yeah, could Where you? I live. Yeah, I live in the country. Yeah, if I wanted to get if I wanted to get fifty miles, it would take me about a day and a half. If I was, I wouldn't. I'd have to travel from my house. I'm not being smart. Yeah, no. To travel from I my believe house. Believe it. I'd be easier to fly to London and come back. Yeah, so you, you couldn't so, rely, like, like you, you need your car from a, from a practical perspective. If I were to fly out of Dublin, say I live in Cork, if I were to fly out of Dublin, I'd have to get a car, a bus, a plane, a, a, on the far side then, and the same thing coming back at certain times. Now, the service wouldn't, wouldn't bring me home after about nine o'clock at night. Mm. So you're stranded. Like, I mean, basically, there's most of this country. Like, I mean, how does a mother and two children and a briefcase go on an uh, electric scooter? 
you know, like, let's be real, the whole thing needs really looking at. There's something seriously wrong with the whole idea here, what's happening. Lots of people are avoiding the tolls, now driving through much smaller towns and villages, says this texter. It's happening all the time, now leading to huge congestion problems as well. Another texter says, my biggest issue is that there's three tolls for a 50-mile journey from Dundrum to Virginia in County Cavan. Another texter says, leave or lower the toll tag price, increase the non-tag toll price only, and then prosecute the non-payers. Like, just on the point, Shane, around how much um, government or transport infrastructure Ireland, like how much the hikes can, can increase by, is it in line with anything in, in particular or can you just, you know, pluck a number out of the sky? No, there is a there is a maximum allowable toll that's um, as part of the toll bylaws. Um, and that and that's that was set up many years ago, and you know so the, the they're regulated to that. There is a maximum allowable toll, and that is uh, adjusted according to inflation. So apparently, inflation between August twenty two and twenty three was six point three percent, and that's what all of these increases are based on now. Um, but I, I, the TII doesn't have to increase its own tolls at all. Um, whatever about the contractual agreements mm. between it and it's PPP. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's not it's not a it's not a hands are tied situation at all. Yeah. Is is it just that we're into the start of the year? I mean, it's not a conversation that we're having for the first time, Shane. It it is something it is, you know, affecting people, uh, their pockets, their wallets and a lot of people out there that are motorists that really don't have other tra- public transport options like like James mentioned. People rely, they need their cars and in the absence of having an alternative like, is that what's really just annoying people about this? Yeah, I think it's partially that. I mean, the the, the occasional user of tolls won't notice this. It's, it's the people who are using it day in, day out, a few times a day. But I think just a bit as big an issue here is the fact that it's pushing cars off these efficient, safe mm. motorways onto smaller, less safe roads and then causing congestion and pollution in small towns. That That is probably as big an issue as anything else. Yeah, and you can imagine, I mean, for people living, residents in small towns, living in the streets in the smaller towns, like, absolutely. I have no doubt within the next two to three months, that'll be a topic here for discussion on the show someday with local people in small towns really annoyed about that. Text are asking, why is there no train track between Limerick and Shannon? Uh, another listener, we need a better system for motorcycle toll payment. This listener says, I drive an EV. I avail of discounted tolls. In future, though, I will avoid the toll roads and save on the toll fee and use less battery on the by roads as well. Um, One more for the moment. The idea that the tolls are there to encourage people to use public transport is total nonsense. I live in Clondalkin. I work in Blanche. I use the M50 and have to pay the toll. If I was to get public transport, I'd have to get two buses. It would take me two hours each way. There'd be 20 hours a week travelling, says this listener. 087 1400 106 is the WhatsApp number. If you're affected by the toll hikes, we want to hear from you here on Lunchtime Live. My thanks to, to, to uh, Shane O'Donoghue, who's editor with CompleteCar.ie, Kieran, Hugh and James as well, all for getting in touch with us.